Hi, this is Terry Kuti with Deep Sea Foundation, and I'm here today with Dr. Scott Hollenbeck from Duke University, a microsurgeon who performs deep. And Dr. S uh, Hollenbeck is going to talk to us today um, about residency and fellowship as it pertains to deep flap and some questions probably that the patients could ask. Sure, yeah, Terry, thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy to talk to you about resident education and how that pertains to deep flap surgery. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to know that this is a, a lot of training involved to do this type of surgery. So that starts in medical school and that's usually four years and then you decide you want to go into a surgical field and so a lot of people choose plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also go into general surgery, other, other fields, and then eventually into plastic surgery. But Nonetheless, usually it's about five to seven years of residency training uh, to complete a plastic surgery fellowship uh, or a plastic surgery residency. And then at that point, usually the residents are looking to either go into practice or to get more training. And that would be a fellowship. A fellowship in microsurgery would be most applicable to somebody that eventually is going to be doing deep flaps. That's a one year uh, fully focused a period of time at a major, usually a major medical center where the fellow gets a chance to participate in a number of, of surgeries, including deep flap surgery. So at the end of that training, they should be uh, capable and able at that point to go on their own and uh, start their own practice and perform complex surgeries, including deep flap procedure. Yeah, there's just so many complexities to it and practicing and practicing the uh, anastomosis or tying those blood vessels vessels together is so important. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I would add, as part of our residency training, we, we actually have a, a laboratory where we have some microscopes and we have synthetic blood vessels. And uh, we ask the residents to, to practice in there, basically, so that before they involved in any kind of actual patient surgery, they've had uh, many hours underneath the, the microscope learning how to use the, the instruments and the specialized sutures so that uh, as they continue during their training, they can get more and more uh, skilled at that, at that particular technique. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious as a e former educator, uh, so you go into the lab and you observe them, you have a grading scale for their how they do on the on their technique and skill, or how does that work? Yeah, we don't have a, a formalized, you know, A, B, or C type grading scale, right. but uh, basically, it's it's uh, the residents need to demonstrate a level of competency mm -hmm. at certain tasks. It starts out, you know, fairly easy, uh, where we're just simply putting in a, a micro suture, and mm -hmm. if they can accomplish that task, then we move to the more complicated, complete anastomosis. That's where you connect two blood vessels together. And once they complete that, we actually have a, another type of course in, that involves uh, a small animal model uh, to, to help the residents learn how to actually do that on a, on a living animal. And that way they can test and see that their uh, skills are okay. Only after completing that are they usually ready to then uh, become involved in actual patient care as it pertains to microsurgery. Wow. Very interesting. Well, thank you so much. Sure.